Viewer, today is one whole week since India Today began reporting the Pune Porsche accident case. Each day that we've covered the story, it has felt like I've managed to cover as many of the ugly layers as there actually exist. But each day I've been proven wrong and you've seen it every single day here on my show. This morning, I woke up to a message from my friend and reporter Divyesh Singh in Pune, who had just broken today's big update. Something that we had suspected from the start, but stands shamefully proven today. That the family of the underage Porsche driver had used its muscle and money to probably bribe senior forensic doctors into tampering with the underage teenager's blood sample in order to hide the fact that he had been drinking, to hide and mask the alcohol content in his blood. Can you believe it? On India Today, we believe in naming and shaming, and that's why we were the first to release the identities of these two doctors, Dr. Ajay Tavde and Dr. Srihari Halnor. Two doctors, medical legal experts, entrusted by the state and community with doing their job without fear or favor, choosing instead to crumple like cowards for a few lakh rupees and probably the threat of damage to their careers at the hands of a politically connected family, the Agarwals. But these two doctors who've shamed a noble profession and brought disrepute upon themselves and their colleagues and their families are only the latest players in what our reporters have revealed over the last one week with news break after news break to be a well-lubricated chain reaction of corruption flowing from one powerful and super well-connected family. What is truly shocking about the Pune case is that the machinery of corruption kicked into action even before the bodies of the two victims, Ashwini and Anish, had been moved from the road. Based just on what we know so far, viewer, let me paint you a simple picture of just how seamlessly corruption played out in the Pune case. It began just minutes after the accident, when the two Pune police personnel on ground decided not to alert the area DCP about the accident. In other words... The cops on the ground decided almost instantaneously to try and handle the issue on the ground itself. That stinks of cover-up right off the bat. Next, the underage driver was taken to the police station where he was provided with food. Some reports say pizza and sandwiches. The police deny this, but he was definitely given something to eat. But why? He was further allowed to take a nap. The boy's family and lawyers were allowed access to him at the police station. He was permitted to make calls. The local MLA from the NCP Ajit Pawar faction also arrived there. Why? And his role in this disgusting episode is also under scrutiny by us. And we will, I promise you, find out more. Well, under pressure from the politically super-connected family and its battery of lawyers, the boy wasn't taken for a medical test to check his alcohol levels until eight hours after the accident. Meanwhile, the boy's father, powerful builder Vishal Agarwal, had escaped from Pune only to be nabbed 48 hours later in a different town in somebody else's car. Only 15 hours after the teenager's detention, the boy was out on bail with the Juvenile Justice Board judge providing a host of bail conditions that brought this story to the national spotlight in the first case one week ago. Bail conditions that nobody will forget like writing a 300-word essay about the accident, getting counseling and avoiding bad company, etc. In the meanwhile, the Agarwal family was also apparently busy convincing their family driver, Gangaram, to sacrifice himself and take the blame for the accident, leading to him being questioned twice. And all the while, all the while as we now know, as we've told you today in our big news break, two doctors had quietly been phoned by the family or their political contacts and ordered to throw the boy's blood sample into the dustbin and present a clean blood sample of some other unsuspecting patient as the legal finding in this case, basically to suggest that the boy was not drunk, he had not been drinking. This viewer was 360 degree corruption. It played out seamlessly, almost elegantly. The people who bent and were bought almost didn't need to be asked. That's the power of a rich family with political connections in this country. Their demands, their priorities, their requirements are understood down the chain and sometimes 
calls don't even need to be made for this corruption to play out. Just the name of the family springing up in the case seemed to be enough for cops, doctors, judges, lawyers, bureaucrats, MLAs, possibly even ministers to begin to crawl and show deference. Which is why, let me say this straight with no doubts at all in my mind. I don't buy for a minute that this powerful family's strength was the police or a pair of doctors. It had to have gone way above that. You and I both know that viewer. So whether it is people in the Ekna Chinde government or the judge of the Juvenile Justice Board or members of the Sharad Pawar NCP or members of any other party, nobody should be beyond merciless career-ending action. If it's a minister, we will expose them and I promise you we will name and shame them as we have been doing without fear or favor for the last one week here on India Today. Let's be clear, the Maharashtra government was goaded into action thanks to media pressure boosted nationally by India Today on this day last week and then thankfully taken up by all others. The truly unsettling aspect of all that I've just described though isn't the corruption itself. It is that such corruption took place, viewer, in plain sight in one of India's big cities under the full gaze of social media with well-known people. For all we hear about the battle against corruption, the leveling of the playing field for common citizens, the accountability of the wealthy and influential, the Pune story is a jolting reminder of what celebrated French writer Jean-Baptiste Alphonse Carr famously said in 1849. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Breaking more details of the remand copy of the arrest of these three individuals from Sassoon Hospital. Two doctors and one peon have been arrested by the Pune police. The police, remember, want to probe who else spoke to the doctors in order for them to fudge these samples in order to protect the teenager, the Porsche driver. The police say government documents have been manipulated to this end and that a conspiracy was planned in detail to save the underage son of Vishal Agarwal in the Pune crash case. The Pune police is currently probing some financial transactions as well. I want to go across to India today is Divyesh Singh who's been breaking every piece of news coming out of this case for the last few days. Divyesh, the big story today broken by you, the arrest of two doctors for shockingly fudging the blood samples in order to protect the teenager. Now financial transactions are also going to be scrutinized, which means the police still doesn't know who made the calls and ordered this forgery. Uh, well, Shiv, uh, as per our sources in the police department, WhatsApp calls and FaceTime calls of Dr. Ajay Tavre hmm. are being looked into, that are being checked to find out who was the person who called up Ajay Tavre in the morning itself. Even before the boy was brought to Sassoon Hospital, Dr. Ajay Tavre had received instructions on what to do, on what needs to be done. Because when the boy, the minor accused, was brought to the Sassoon Hospital during the physical examination, I again emphasize on this, during physical examination, the doctor present, Dr. Halnur, told police officials that I do not smell any alcohol. Uh, there is a walking test that is done of uh, accused persons while doing an alcohol test. That also he okayed. He said he's completely normal. Hmm. While the police officials who had brought him could smell alcohol out of the boy. But Dr. Halnur clearly stated, Mujhe koi smell nahi aa hai, koi alcohol ka smell nahi. After that, he took the blood sample yeah. on in, uh, while the cops insisted that a blood sample be taken. He took the blood sample and acting on instructions of Dr. Taure, who is, who is his boss, he then uh, put that sample in a dustbin okay. and after that, he used some other person's sample, swapped it with some other person's sample, which is suspected that this blood sample, which was used or which was sent further to FSL, was brought in from mortuary.
Incredible. I think that is a shocking piece of information because it is suspected that this blood sample was brought from a mortuary. Yeah, incredible. Incredible details. Stay with me, Devesh. I'm going to come back to you. I just have uh, Milind Devra, Shiv Sena MP, with me on the phone line for a quick reaction on this story. Milind, uh, welcome. Thanks for speaking to India today. Uh, you know, day after day, today happens to be one week since this story, uh, you know, became the kind of national story it is. Uh, you know, your, your thoughts first off, uh, Milind, on this story, because with each passing day in our coverage, it has, uh, you know, it has emerged that there has been collusion at all levels, whether it is the police, whether it is doctors, whether it is the juvenile justice board, there is a clear sense of VVIP privilege and protection that's been extended to this underage driver, Milind. No, firstly, you know, any uh, anything that is being unearthed by the India Today group, I would firstly at the outset congratulate you and invite you to do, to do more. These are things which are public issues. These transcend which party is in power and ensuring that speedy justice prevails is something which is um, a firm belief of, I can assure you, of this government in the state. Uh, as far as any kind of collusion, if it comes to light that there has been any collusion, there has been any malpractice, there mm. has been any um, siding with the accused, I can only assure you about one thing based on my conversations with the Chief Minister uh, with, at the highest level of the Maharashtra government, that the government is very, very clear and very committed to ensure that justice prevails, to protect nobody, uh, to ensure that the law obviously will take its own course. Mm. We're not a democracy. We are a democracy. We have a court of law. We have a judicial system that is robust. But there is no question of allowing any individual, no matter how powerful they may be, to go scot-free, to take the law into their own hands. So my simple point to you is that the government is fully committed to ensuring that if anything comes to light, whether mm. it's done uh, by an independent agency, whether it's done by the media, it will be actioned, it will be looked into very seriously, and the government will do everything they can to make sure that um, justice prevails. Uh, Milind, you're saying that the chief minister has, uh, uh, you, you know, personally looked at this story and he has promised action at all levels, you're saying that? Absolutely, and I can tell you he's somebody who is, um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of politicians in this state over many, many, many decades, and I've seen them handle many a controversy. Um, which involve issues similar to this. Uh, he's someone who's very clear that regardless of who the person is, which party they're from, could be his own party, could be any other party, could be someone with no political affiliations but a VVIP in terms of their wealth or other status. Mm. He will not let somebody, uh, you know, let the, the guilty um, go scot-free. And um, as I said, that doesn't mean we have to go into a witch hunt. That also yeah. means let the law take its own course. Let the police do their job. Let the investigating agencies do their job. Let the judiciary do their job without pressure from politicians and media. But by all means, if anyone has any evidence to the contrary that somebody is colluding to protect um, uh, the guilty, to protect the accused, Milan, the final? government will yeah. leave no stone unturned whether it's the Pune police, whether it's the police department, whether it's any other government department, to ensure that speedy justice prevails. You know, you know, Milind, uh, final question. Uh, accidents happen, VVIP privilege is not something new in the country, but one of the reasons why, you know, perhaps people have been shocked in the way that they have been about this particular case is the impunity with which... Uh, you know, uh, elements of the system appear to have worked for this family in order to protect this boy. That's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, people are very angry. Uh, is, is uh, you know, has the government recognized that? And that's the reason why urgency is required to send out the right message? And will it be sent? My information is very clear that the government has acknowledged and is continuing to acknowledge whatever is coming to light. Again, sometimes... Does collusion happen regardless of which party is in power? Hmm. It's possible. Uh, does collusion happen at the lowest level? That's possible. But at the highest level, I can assure you that there is no question of protecting any of the colluders, whether it's the accused or whether it's a member of the government. could be of any department. So at the highest level, they've yeah. taken cognizance of the fact that there are media reports coming to light, that collusion may have happened, and the government will do all that they can to arrest those um, who are allegedly guilty 
and to prosecute those in a court of law um, who have been accused of colluding with the accused. Okay, Milan, there is no thank question of yes. protecting, uh, giving protection to anyone. There is no question of, uh, regardless of who this person is. I'm saying this person doesn't seem to be somebody yeah. who's a politician. But even if this person was someone with political connections belonging to any party, there's no question of supporting these kinds of things. These things, people, this is not about Absolutely. rich versus poor. People who misuse the law, it could be anyone regardless of their economics, which strata they belong to. Yeah. People who misuse the law have to be given a stern message that they cannot misuse the law. And whether that person misusing the law is a rich, spoiled kid, whether it's a, a rogue police officer, there is no space in Maharashtra for this kind of taking the law into their own hands. And this is not the first time it's happened. Yeah. It's happened even a few months ago, if you remember. Yes. When a rogue police officer went to an industrialist home and was planting bombs and trying to extort money. So both ways, these are things which have been condemned. These are things which have been criticized. And these are people who have been jailed. Yeah. So I'm sure the law will take its own course. But at the highest level, to answer your question, yes, they've taken cognizance and they will protect no one and ensure that speedy justice prevails. Milundira, thanks very much for speaking to India today. The Juvenile Justice Board is also not beyond scrutiny, uh, Divesh. You know, the 300-word essay, 15 hours, you know, bail granted to this boy after just 15 hours. The Juvenile Justice Board judge will also need to be investigated about whether, uh, you know, uh, anybody in the Juvenile Justice Board was compromised in such a manner by the Agarwal family. Uh, well, yes, Shiv, we've received this information from our sources in Pune Police that an inquiry is being conducted in these regards also. Hmm. The, uh, the person, the non-judicial member on the day of 19th, 19th of May, it was a holiday court and there was no regular judges available. So a non-judicial member right. uh, held the hearing. He heard uh, what police had to say and he is the person who signed on the order stating that the boy should work with traffic police, do social service and write a 300 word essay. Despite cops, despite police officials adding and pointing out that they have added the section 304 of IPC, culpable homicide not amounting to murder, which was done in complete knowledge by the minor accused. And the same day application was also filed that he should be tried as an adult. Yes. But despite that, the juvenile justice board released him, allowed him to go home and only asked him to write a 300 word essay okay. on accident and what is the solution to that. So the non-judicial member... This is yeah, under yeah, inquiry. Yes, yeah, yeah, finish your point. He was compromised whether he was compromised or not, whether he were, he acted under pressure, hmm. whether he indulged into some illegal activity that is being probed, okay. it is part of the probe. Remember, police officials have said that they are leaving no stone unturned right. and each and every person is being investigated. Divyesh, thanks very much for getting us that report straight from the ground one week since we began our coverage. And we won't be stopping anytime soon. Our reporters on the ground will continue to bring you the big lead story on the Pune case every single day. And speaking of impact, and we don't use that word lightly, Prajwal Revanna, the JDS MP from Karnataka, who has spent as of today one month on the run from rape charges and sexual assault charges, following relentless coverage by India today, he has finally broken his silence and announced that he will be returning to India and appearing before the special investigation team ordered against him on the 31st of May. Let me remind you that it's been... A month today that Prajwal Revanna left India and has been uh, stationed, he has stationed himself probably in Germany as far as, uh, you know, what we are told. But right after polling concluded in Hassan constituency where he is the sitting MP, he has broken his silence, like I said, in this video that he shared with a Kannada channel where he talks about being depressed. He talks about being in isolation and that he will now be fully cooperating with the investigating agencies. Yellargu Namskara Modele Dagin and the Tande Taige Tatange Ago Nana Kumarange Mato Nadina Janatege Ago Yellan and the Karia Kartrige Shamapne Kelta 
ನಾನು ಫಾರಿನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ಮಾಹಿತಿ ಕೊಡದೆ ಇರೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಮಾಹಿತಿ ಕೊಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಏನ್ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತಾರನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಚುನಾವಣೆ ನಡೀತು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತಾರನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಚುನಾವಣೆ ನಡೆದಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವತ್ತು ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ರೀತಿ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಆಗಲಿ ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಕೇಸ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಏನೂ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಎಸ್ಐಟಿನೂ ಕೂಡ ರಚನೆ ಆಗಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಈ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತಾರನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ನಾನು ಫಾರಿನ್ ಹೋಗೋದು ಕೂಡ ಇದು ಮುಂಚೆನೆ ಪ್ರೀ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಫಾರಿನ್ ಹೊರಟೆ ಫಾರಿನ್ ಹೊರಟಾದ ಮೇಲೆ ಮೂರ್ನಾಲ್ಕು ದಿನದ ನಂತರ ನಾನು ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ನೋಡೋ ಅಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಚಾನೆಲ್ ನೋಡೋ ಅಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೆ ಈ ಮಾಹಿತಿ ದೊರಕೋ ಅಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಆಯಿತು ಮಾಹಿತಿ ದೊರಕದ ಮೇಲೆ ನಂತರ ಎಸ್ಐಟಿನೂ ಕೂಡ ಏನು ಒಂದು ನೋಟಿಸ್ ಕೊಡೋ ಅಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿತು ಆ ಎಸ್ಐಟಿ ನೋಟಿಸ್ಗೂ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಖಾತೆ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಮತ್ತು ನನ್ನ ಲಾಯರ್ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ನಾನು ಏಳು ದಿನ ಸಮಯ ಅವಕಾಶ ಕೇಳಿದ್ದೆ ಏಳು ದಿನ ಸಮಯ ಅವಕಾಶ ಕೇಳದ ಮೇಲೆ ಕೂಡ ಅದು ಮಾರನೇ ದಿನ ನೆನೆ ಏನು ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ನ ಹಿರಿಯ ನಾಯಕರಾದಂಥ ರಾಹುಲ್ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಅವರು ಮತ್ತು ಹಾಗೂ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹಿರಿಯ ನಾಯಕರುಗಳು ಏನು ಓಪನ್ ವೇದಿಕೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಒಂದು ವಿಚಾರಗಳನ್ನ ಪ್ರಚಾರ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಾರಂಭ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಚರ್ಚೆ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಾರಂಭ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಒಂದು ರಾಜಕೀಯದ ಪಿತೂರಿ ಮಾಡೋ ಅಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಿದಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಡಿಪ್ರೆಷನ್ಗೆ ಹೋಗುವಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಆಯಿತು ಐಸೋಲೇಷನ್ಗೆ ಹೋಗುವಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಮೊದಲನೇದಾಗಿ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರನ್ನು ಕ್ಷಮಾಪಣೆ ಕೇಳಿದೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಕ್ಷಮಿಸಿ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದೆ ನಾನು ಇವ ಅದಾದ ನಂತರ ಹಾಸನಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಕೆಲವು ಶಕ್ತಿಗಳು ಎಲ್ಲ ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿಕೊಂಡು ಇವತ್ತು ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ರಾಜಕೀಯದ ಒಂದು ಪಿತೂರಿ ಮಾಡೋ ಅಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡೋದಿರ್ಬೋದು ರಾಜಕೀಯವಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಏನು ಬೆಳೀತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ನನ್ನ ಕುಗ್ಗಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಏನೇನು ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಕರಣಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೂಡ ಒಂದು ಭಾಗಿಯಾಗುವಂತ ಕೆಲಸಗಳನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇವನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನೋಡದಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಿದ್ದು ಇನ್ನ ಒಂದು ಆಘಾತ ಆಗುವಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಆಗಿ ನಾನೇ ಒಂಚೂರು ದೂರ ಇದ್ದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಯಾರು ಕೂಡ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತಪ್ಪು ತಿಳಿಯೋದು ಬೇಡ ನಾನೇ ಖುದ್ದಾಗಿ ಶುಕ್ರವಾರ ಏನು ಮೂವತ್ತೊಂದನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಹತ್ತು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಎಸ್ಐಟಿ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಎಸ್ಐಟಿ ಮುಂದೆ ಬಂದು ನಾನು ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ ಈ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟಿಗೇಷನ್ಗೆ ಸಹಕಾರ ಕೊಡೋ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ನಾನು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಸರಿಯಾದ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಡೋಂಥ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಹಾಗೆ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯದ ಮೇಲೆ ನನಗೆ ನಂಬಿಕೆ ಇದೆ ಖಂಡಿತವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಈ ಒಂದು ಏನು ಸುಳ್ಳಿನ ಪ್ರಕರಣಗಳಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಈ ಸುಳ್ಳು ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಸುಳ್ಳು ಪ್ರಕರಣದಿಂದ ಆಚೆ ಬರೋಂಥ ಕೆಲಸನ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯದ ಮುಖಾಂತರನೇ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋತೀನಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ನಂಬಿಕೆ ನನ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಿದೆ ಹಾಗೂ ದೇವರ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಮತ್ತು ಜನರ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ನನ್ನ ಕುಟುಂಬದ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಇರಲಿ ಖಂಡಿತವಾಗ್ಲೂ ನಾನು ಈ ಮೂವತ್ತೊಂದನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಶುಕ್ರವಾರ ನಾನು ಎಸ್ಐಟಿ ಮುಂದೆ ಬರ್ತೀನಿ ಬಂದ ನಂತರ ನಾನು ಇದಕ್ಕೆಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕೂ ಕೂಡ ಈ ಒಂದು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ತಡೆ ಹೇಳಿ ಅಂತ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ನಂಬಿಕೆ ಇರಲಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಿಮ್ನೆಲ್ಲರನ್ನು ಕೋರ್ತಾ ನಾನು ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಹೇಳಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೀನಿ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ and the first reactions have come in from the family of Prajwal Revanna following his breaking of silence announcing his return to India by the end of this month to face the special investigation team his uncle HD Kumaraswamy former chief minister of Karnataka has spoken out says he is relieved that his nephew and JDS MP Prajwal Revanna will be returning he says the truth will be out soon take a look ಈ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಕರಣಕ್ಕೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಪಟ್ಟ ಹಾಗೆ ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ನಮ್ಮ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೀಯ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷರು ದೇವೇಗೌಡರು ಮತ್ತು ನಾನು ಎಲ್ಲೇ ಇದ್ದರೂ ಬಂದು ಎಸ್ಐಟಿಗೆ ಹಾಜರಾಗಿ ತನಿಖೆಗೆ ಸಹಕಾರ ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಒಂದು ದೇವೇಗೌಡರು ಎಚ್ಚರಿಕೆಯೂ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಮನವಿನೂ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೆ ಮತ್ತು ಕಾರ್ಯಕರ್ತರಿಗೆ ಗೌರವ ಇದ್ದರೆ ತಕ್ಷಣ ಬರಬೇಕು ಅಂತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಒಂದು ಮನವಿಯನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿದ್ದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗೊಟ್ಟು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂಥದಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮಗೂ ಸ್ವಲ್
Deputy Chief Minister DK Shivakumar saying the law will take its own course. Anaga Keshav joining me live from Bengaluru. Anaga, big India today impact. Uh, you know, uh, relentless coverage forcing not only a spotlight on this entire case, but now one month since Prajwal Revana left the country, he announces that he is returning and will face the law on 31st. Well, that's right, Shirdi. Sure. Uh, you know, it was India Today's relentless and extensive coverage that has led Prajal Revana to finally break his silence after a month. You know, it, you know, it has exactly been 31 days shift since he fled the country, just hours after elections got over. And now, after India Today's coverage and, of course, the External Affairs Ministry's show cause notice to Prajal Revana, demanding him to give a response as to why his diplomatic passport should not be cancelled. Being a parliamentarian, I think that, you know, you know that just reached the peak of humility after the external affair you know ministry's intervention yeah. that was when Prajal Revana has finally broken his silence he says you know throughout the video shift if you take a look at it he's just trying to garner more and more sympathy by saying that he respects his uh, you know uh, he respects his elderly grandfather he says my Kumarana my uncle my parents my Karikartas all these charges against me are false I respect the judiciary but if throughout the video not a single word you know that is addressed to the women of Hassan Yes. that he has allegedly exploited not a single word addressing Amazing. that issue and throughout the video shift not for a minute did he even reveal which foreign country that he is in very very you know sort of evasive kind of formal diplomatic statements coming in from Prajal Revana truly shifts playing it like a paka politician that was the kind of you know emotionless response that we saw in that two and a half minute video that just played on air we need to wait and watch you yeah. know if Prajal Revana will really show up on May 31st you know at the CID office at 10 a.m. That's what he promises, but we need to wait if he will really turn up. Well, he said it, so he, he better keep his word on that. Sagai, uh, you know, what are you hearing from the SID? You know, we heard that conversation with uh, DK Shivakumar just now, but what is the SID saying? You know, one month later, uh, uh, you've got, uh, you've got uh, Prajwal Revana acting like as if he's doing them a favor by coming back. Absolutely, and he has no other go because there is a warning letter, open letter uh, written by Deve Gauda. Yes, it was a damage control, but he realizes the importance of returning to the country. And remember, there is a second letter written by the Chief Minister of Karnataka requesting the PMO as well as External Affairs Minister to go ahead and cancel his diplomatic passport. Yeah. He's not doing a favor. He's been forced to do. It is a relentless coverage of India today. It is an investigation department as well as uh, the pressure from the... Uh, external Ministry of Affairs as well as Karnataka government. External Ministry of Affairs cancelling the diplomatic passport. Once the diplomatic passport has been cancelled, the, the, the SIT will get to know the every single movement of him and he'll be forced to deport it to India. So he have no other choice because the passport is getting cancelled. In, in, in case if it has not been cancelled, probably you wouldn't have even released this particular video. Probably you wouldn't have even spoke about this. You would have happily say like any other fugitive who's staying back in any, any other country. So probably it is the media uh, uh, media pressure, it is the SIT investigation as well as the letter written by the Chief Minister of Karnataka as well as SIT which have forced him to release this yeah. particular video and uh, uh, ensure that he is returns on 31st and you, 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 we have also seen the letter of Deve Goda. Many uh, political thinkers say that uh, it was a damage control by the party because all this while the Deve Goda was keeping quiet, he realized that now there is no any other choice because uh, the uh, external, ex, uh, external affairs ministers had reciprocated to the letter okay. of Karnataka government. Now, to ensure that, to control the party and the image of the party, they have written a letter. Now, he has reciprocated to that right. and says that he will be returning on 31st. 31st is when he says he will be returning and facing the SIT. We're yet to hear from the SIT, which we will very shortly. Big impact of India today's Bengaluru team, including Sagai and Anaga. Thanks very much for getting us that ground update. We will keep tracking this story. We've got more breaking news coming in now. An update on the allegations leveled by Ahmadmi Party Rajya Sabha MP Swati Maliwal of alleged assault at the residence of the Delhi Chief Minister a few days ago. Well, no bail for Arvind Kejriwal's aide Bibhav Kumar who was arrested by the Delhi police a few days ago. The bail has been dismissed. Remember, Bibhav has been 
personally accused by Swati Maliwal of assaulting and abusing her. Swati Maliwal claimed in court that there was a threat to her life and her family's life if Bibav got bail and that he is no ordinary Aam Admi Party worker. Let me go straight across to India today is uh, Arvind Oja for more on this. Okay, Srishti, let's go across to Srishti Oja for more on this story. Srishti, bail denied to Bibav. Uh, how long is he going to remain in custody at this point of time and what happens next in the case? Well, Yashraf, like you said, it's uh, definitely a big setback for Vibhav Kumar. Uh, he was expecting bail from Delhi State Cesare Court. Now, after his bail dismissal, as of now, we know that he's presently in judicial custody because the Delhi police have not sought any further police custody yeah. for him. However, Delhi police today told court that they are likely to seek his custody to confront him with some digital evidence and uh, the report, the FSL report that they're expecting very soon. Tomorrow, his judicial custody ends, which is when he will uh, be produced before the court and it will be important important to see if Delhi police seeks any further custody. As far as his daily uh, plea is concerned, we saw quite an intense hearing today before Kizazari court where Swati Malawal was also physically present and she directly addressed yeah. the court and uh, opposed a uh, grant of any bail to Babhav Kumar, clearly stating that if he's out on bail, it will cause grave danger to both her and her family. Mm. Uh, Vibhav's lawyer, however, called his entire case premeditated, uh, which has only been concocted to malign Vibhav. In fact, even right. went ahead and said that Swati Malawal's injuries could have been self-inflicted. Uh, so, so, as of now, uh, the next step uh, that uh, for the next hope of relief for Vibhav Kumar would be only if, this, uh, if today's order is challenged before mm -hmm. the High Court by his legal team. Okay. And it will be important to see what the Delhi Police tells for tomorrow. Back to you. All right, Srishti, thanks very much for that comprehensive update. We'll keep a track very closely.